Welcome to Peninsula Seniors Lecture Series. Sit back, get comfortable, and let's go see what they have for us today. Good morning, my name is Leanne. I'm the lecture coordinator for the Palos Verde Seniors. Today, Michael George from the Torrance Library is going to be joining us. He's going to be giving a presentation entitled, If Walls Could Talk. Do you wonder about the history of your home? Do you wonder who built it, who's lived in it, or if anything nefarious ever happened in it? Michael George is going to teach us how to research the history of our home. Thank you, Leanne, for that great introduction. Uh, thank you for having me back. My name is Mike George. I'm a reference librarian at the Torrance uh, Library System. Today I'm going to talk to you about your home. Everybody lives in a home, whether it's an apartment building, whether it's a 30-room mansion, or whether it's an 800-square-foot house in Torrance. Originally, I designed this for the Torrance Centennial. Uh, the idea of the, knowing the history of your house is to see what has happened in your house, who lived there, um, who may have was famous, how much it cost when it was originally built, what it was built out of, you'd be surprised what people find. We had one person doing their house history in Torrance who found a gun embedded in his walls. Um, when I gave this talk before, it was for older homes. Generally, homes of 50 years or more have some interesting history and relatively easy to find. Now, in Palos Verdes, this is what Palos Verdes looked like back in the day. As you can see, not a lot of development. Most of the homes in Palos Verdes, the estates excluded, of course, were developed in the last uh, less than 50 years. In the 60s, generally early 60s and 70s, some go back to the 50s. So what I'm going to show you today is steps to go about finding out the history. It may not apply to your home. However, it's useful in most any historical research project you may wish to do. So you could interchange this from a history of your house to a history of most anything. So even though your house may be um, built in the 70s, I shudder to think, um, this should still be useful for you. The picture I'm showing is, of course, the Palos Verdes Peninsula. You could recognize the two promontories in the upper uh, left hand of the slide. There's some debate on exactly what is pictured here. Uh, some say it's one of the Japanese farms in the peninsula in the 40s. Uh, some say it's the Vanderlip estate, though I believe the Vanderlip estate would have been a little more uh, toward the top of the uh, picture, to tell you the truth. Uh, the Vanderlips were the ultimate, of course, developers. He had a climatologist come in and situate uh, his villa, exactly the best climate in the peninsula. So the fog comes in at night, comes out during the day, and it's a beautiful. The rest of us had to pick and choose. <laughs> First thing is the obvious. How many, when they bought their house, had a title check? A title check. When you buy a house, you check the title so you know that it's free and clear, so that there's no uh, holds on the sale, there's no previous contractor looking for money he wasn't paid, that sort of thing. And they're called uh, title checks. Uh, chances are you all have your deeds. It's another thing. And you also have a lot of information in your very own closet. Take a look at your closet. Uh, I actually grew up on the peninsula in Del Cerro. When we were um, going through our closet, we actually found the original house plans. We didn't know they existed, but there they were. It was great. It saved us a lot of money if we ever wanted to add on to the house. But again, check the unlooked for corners of your home. Also, this, now this applies in the older sections of town, but back in the day, contractors who developed uh, areas stamped their names in concrete, much like the pharaohs. Uh, they wanted to be recognized for the long haul. So when you're walking down, particularly in the older sections of town, look down in at the street corners. You will notice, not only if you're lucky, the contractor of your development, but you'll also notice when they put in the sidewalks. In this case, you can see the 1936 and 1926 and the name Guadalupe. 
Guadalupe was one of the original named streets in Torrance. Uh, now here comes the bad news. Uh, due to the ADA, Americans with Disability Act, you notice all the corners are now uh, being cut away. So all this sort of information is being lost. Another fun fact, if you went to Old Torrance, you'll notice that most of the names were stamped in the sides of the street. So you have a corner of, say, Satari and Cravens. On that corner, Satari and Cravens would have been engraved on the side of the curb. But as decades of resurfacing has occurred, that resurfacing has gone up so that now you have only half a Satari or Cravens listed. And it might be a little hard to see. Next thing you want to do, talk to your neighbors. A lot of people have old time neighbors. I know uh, when I lived in Del Cerro, our neighbors were one of the original uh, buyers of the homes. Great people to talk to. They know the whole neighborhood. Who lived where, why, who did what to whom, uh, who's being indicted, etc. One thing to remember about oral history. Take it with a grain of salt. Uh, just like in genealogy, and you could think of this as a genealogy of your house, document, document, document. Okay, so your neighbor said, yes, the Boyce lived next door, Falcon and the Storm, Snowman type. Um, that was his house right there. Yes, they played with my kids. Uh, he was spying for the Russians even then. Um, those are easy to confirm. Go to the old newspapers. Um, make sure you read to confirm what your neighbors have told you. Because, as I know myself, our memories are not perfect. Um, sometimes what we tell each other may be a good story, but it might not be true. The Los Angeles County Assessors, boo. <laughs> These are the people who you pay your taxes to, your property taxes. Uh, we all know them. Most of us know them at least twice a year. Um, they're a great source of basic information about your home. Uh, to get to them, it's very easy. Just do, uh, I'm gonna show a lot of websites here. Generally, if you just Google the names, you'll come right up. For example, if you type in Google Los Angeles County Assessor's page, this page will be the first one you see. The big red circle indicates their website. Just click on it, and you will see they have a page saying uh, property information, maps, etc. You want to click on that, and that's very easy. You just go ahead and type in your address. Now, most of the examples I'm going to use today are from Torrance. Go figure. Uh, but I did include some special stuff for the Palos Verdes area. 1313 Cota. I just love the address, 1313. 1313 Mockingbird Lane, 1313 Cota. Is anyone familiar with that address? You will be. This is the sort of information you get from the assessors. Uh, in the lower red box, it will tell you when the house was built, in this case 1914 slash 1920. It'll tell you when it was sold recently and for how much, and those are great for me if I'm a, I'm a nosy guy. I like to know that sort of thing. This is pretty well the pre-Zillow before Zillow. Uh, another neat thing about this site is you could ask it to find properties within one to three miles of your home, and it will tell you all those homes, how much they sold for, um, when they were built, etc. Now, you notice the slash, 1914 to 1920. That means the original house was built in 1914. 1920 is a major uh, renovation of the house. That's when they had to pull in other permits. Now, they might have redone the entire house, but not pulled their permits. This is the official permit. There's an important thing to note uh, about any government agency, I'm sure you know, library included, that not everything is true. So just like talking to your neighbors, read carefully and with a grain of salt even official government information. Now you notice in this slide, uh, the oldest house by far in Torrance says 1849. This house was built in 1849. Well, when did California become a state? 1850. So they're trying to tell me that this house was built 
in 1849. Well, we kind of know that that's not true. What probably happened is they kind of transposed their number. So instead of 1840, uh, whatever it was, uh, it, they meant 1940. But if you weren't paying attention and you didn't know the area, you would think, gosh, I live in the old, oldest house in Torrance. I want a plaque. Another thing you can get at the assessor's site is the actual surveys or site maps. This is an example. Site maps are wonderful because it shows how the neighborhood might have changed, but even more, it shows you your boundaries and what the lots look like uh, currently. You can blow these up. I, this is just an example of one of the maps. Now, to get more information. To get information on a house, you have to go through a lot of loops, one of which is the assessor's office in Signal Hill. If you want deed information, for example, if you want to know who the last person if on your deed, it should be there, you have the last person who owned your house. If you want to know the person uh, before that, you will need to go to some place to pull those records. It, they no longer have them online where you could find out who owned what because there's been stalker issues and such. So they, it's no longer freely available on the web. So you have to go down to, in our area to the Signal Hill office of the assessor's office. Once you go down there, you could pull the documents for your address, and that will provide many names and other information, the contractor, the architect, if any, uh, the developer information. Keep, write down the names of all these guys. Every time you see a name on a street, every time your neighbor tells you a name, every time you see a name on a deed or other document, note them. You may not have to travel all the way down to Signal Hill, if you're part of the peninsula, still county, if you happen to live in that sliver, uh, you can go to the Lamita office of the permits and uh, building and safety of Los Angeles County. And again, pull your building permits. Building permits. This is great information. Again, it's going to give you, if you're lucky, who built your house, for how much, when, of what, all that information's there. It might not be, there might have been a fire, uh, happens a lot. If you're, you have to know when your house was built. For example, many of the houses here were built before Rancho Palos Verdes became a city. Yeah, in the estates, that's not necessarily the case. If your house was bought, or excuse me, built before the city, then you go to the county for your building permit information. If you're house was built after your city was established, then your city hall is the place to go for your building permit information. Uh, the image there, by the way, is an advertisement for Rolling Hills Estates back in the 30s. Know your street. Yeah, I see a lot of laughter. I see smile. Of course, I know where I live by gum. I always live there. Well, street names have changed. In this particular slide, this is a topographical map uh, in 1940. You'll notice the squiggly red line in the upper left of the slide. That's Hawthorne. That was Hawthorne before it came up to where we're close to where we're sitting now. It's now known as Via Belmonte. That gives you an example of all those houses that were built between, say, Hawthorne now and the PV Estates Golf Course would have had a Hawthorne address. So if you're looking in the old newspapers, uh, if you're looking at the old microfilms at the assessor's office or your uh, city planning office, they might have you listed under your original address. So be aware that it could change, and it often did. Another example, this is from an old Thomas guide uh, about 1946. Shows you a good example of, again, why there is not a lot of information on your house if you... Uh, live in the Rancho Palos Verdes. Look how empty that is. There's almost nothing there. But what I also wanted to show you is the name of the streets. Uh, for example, you notice Crest turns into Vicente. We know what Vicente is now is Hawthorne. Crest is pretty well Crest, but they also called it La Costa or Gran Via. And there's Alta Maria right down there, went down here. Here's part of what used to be PV Drive East. 
uh, in the lower right-hand corner of the slide. In the center of the slide, you're looking at Crest and what is now Hawthorne. Okay, another example. Uh, this is, comes from an old newspaper when they extended Hawthorne from uh, Walteria Torrance area all the way down to the ocean. They were the last bit of connection there. Interestingly enough, that was done by convict labor who had a, there was a convict labor camp uh, around Silver Spur at the time, and that's, that's what you did. That was stimulus package back in 1950s. Notice the dotted line which says Crenshaw in the center of the slide. That has not been built yet. The black lines are what is going to be Hawthorne. Even then, you notice that it's listed as Crest. Thankfully, in this um, example, no one lives there. There is no houses there, so chances are your house isn't going to have that address. But be aware that your address may have changed. It might be even simple that um, the person who they named your street after is no longer politically correct. Uh, that, that has happened, and they change the name of your street, and then you get mixed up in your records. Know when your city was incorporated. Your city, again, in the hill, your cities are newer. 64, 73, 57, those are newer cities. If you're uh, living in Redondo Beach, well, your city was 1892. Torrance was 1921. Those are older cities. You need to know when your city was established to know where you go for your building permit and other information. That was, by the way, a great advertisement for the Palos Verdes Bay Club. My parents used to live there for a while. Uh, again, this is what your building permits will tell you if you happen to be lucky and they actually filled it out correctly and it has all the information. Make a note of everything you find. This is a Sanborn map. Does anyone know what Sanborn map is? Back in the day when you got fire insurance and you were a city, Sanborn was a fire insurance company, and they sent out mappers to map entire communities. The idea was when your entire community burnt down to the ground, they were able to go to the Sanborn maps and know exactly what was where, what your structure was made out of, and what it was, what it actually did for uh, a job. For example, you'd see where the library was, where the feed store where, uh, was, where the dynamite plant was. All that information appeared on your Sanborn map. Bad news. Palos Verdes, because it was so new, didn't have, and there was no urban center on, on the peninsula, has no Sanborn map. Surrounding communities of Redondo Beach, of Lamita, of Torrance, San Pedro, those do have Sanborn maps because they were older communities. This is a particular one, 1926 of Lamita. Again, a great example, going diagonally across the center of the slide is a street. Anyone have an idea what street that might be? Well, well we call it uh, Lamita now. That's Lamita Boulevard. But yes, you're right. It's called Weston, or it used to be called Weston. And before that, it was called the Gravel Pit Road, or thereabouts. Again, know when your streets were renamed. How do you get the Sanborn maps? First thing I have to plug is my colleagues at the Palos Verdes Library District. Get a library. If you don't already have a library card to Palos Verdes, get one. They have a lot of nifty databases, which I'm going to be showing you today, one of which uh, is old newspapers going back to 1880. The other library card you want is a Los Angeles Public Library card. Los Angeles Public Library not only gives you access to the library with the most books, most electronic resources of anybody around, but it gives you uh, the Sanborn maps. Going to lapl.org, clicking on research and homework, will take you to the history section. Under history is just S for Sanborn. Let me, there you go, click. Sanborn history. And it's right there. Once you do that, 
it will allow you to select a community in California. Unfortunately, we don't have the ability, to, or they don't give us the ability to search other communities. It'd be a lot of fun if they did. Uh, so we selected a number of dates that are available, and it will give you the actual maps. These are such wonderful maps. They actually outline the exact building so you can see how a neighborhood evolved in the years from 1926 to 1939. You can see what was built in the meantime, how community has grown, how much your house has been surrounded by neighbors and encroached upon. Okay, this is a close-up example of my favorite house at 1313 Coda Avenue. And you can see, it even outlines the porch, outlines the outbuilding and uh, the upper uh, part of the slide with the red box. You see the A, that's for your automobile. That's what they call the garage. How they fit a 1926 Packard in that, in one of those sheds, I had no clue. And then this is what the house actually looks like. For those of you who may recognize that address, this is Buffy's house, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Now that you should have been collecting data as you're looking at your permits, the sandborn maps, and other information, sidewalks, talking to neighbors. With all those names, you go to your old newspapers. Up uh, where we are, we have several options. The Torrance Herald and the Lamita Press and the Torrance Press are digitized through the Torrance Public Library. At the time, they covered the peninsula. You also have access to the historical Los Angeles Times through the uh, Palos Verdes Library District going back all the way to 1880. They too covered, more or less, the peninsula. Always go to the most local paper you could find. This you can do uh, either by digitally keyword searching through our sites or for example, the Daily Breeze, which I might add is not available either in Palos Verdes or Torrance. We only go back to 1966. If your house was built before 1966 and you want to look it up in the Daily Breeze, you're traveling to Hawthorne. Um, this is an example of what you might find. There's a Via Canada on the Maryland side of the peninsula, uh, 1965 from the Los Angeles Times. Again, this demonstrates the sort of information. Mostly you're going to find ads, which are great. They have the ads of when your fir development first appeared. You may have noticed the couple I've used here from the um, Palos Verdes Bay Club, etc. Wonderful piece of vintage 60 art. Could tell you how much people originally paid for your house. Tells you a little about what your house was built, what benefits it had to live here uh, at the time. Again, uh, my family comes from Del Cerro, so I had to, of course, pull up a Crest Del Cerro ad. Uh, it tells me that for $34,000, I could buy that half acre on the hill up there next to the radar installation that we all know now as Del Cerro Park. Remember back in the day, they used to show a big uh, jack-o'-lantern on Halloween on the domes to make it look like a big, big pumpkin. Ah, the days. Uh, again, this sort of information you can get by doing a keyword search of simply putting in the address or a name that you have been acquiring during your searches. Here's how. This is ProQuest, which is the classic Los Angeles Times. At this example, I use La Mole, L-E-M-O-L-I. That's the street I currently live on. I often wondered what La Mole was. Was it an Italian resort? Was it a mixed drink? I don't know. Uh, so I wanted to find out if there was any information in the newspaper uh, to tell me about it. I also used my development name, El Camino Village, and other words in quotes that I could think of to give me an idea of anything that might have happened in my neighborhood. I did get a hit. In the lower part of this slide, you'll see the hit right there. It says, Street Name Stir City. Bingo. As easy as that. This is the actual article from 1932 from the Los Angeles Times telling me why my street was named La Mole. As it happens, back in the day, the north-south streets were all named. North-south streets in Hawthorne was Lemon, and going into the county, it was Olive. 
but it was straight lines. So think of it like Prairie runs into Madrona. Same street, two different names. Well, they didn't like that down at the city hall, so they decided we'll combine names. L-E-M for lemon, O-L-I for olive, Lamoli. And that is how my street got its name. Again, the Torrance Herald was the popular newspaper in Torrance, but it went, came up here. Every time there was a major development, a housing project, or any newsworthy, it would show up here. Even better, in the old newspapers, they would say, Michael George, 15513 uh, Cedar Avenue, talked about such. They always gave not only your date of birth, but the address. Um, Mike George is burying his father at 2 o'clock Friday at, and so all burglars in the entire South Bay are heading over to my house right now. <laughs> this is the advantage to us here, is since they said that in the address, you can use your specific address typed in as a search term and come up with a lot of good information. To find that information, you go to the Torrance Public Library and go to Torrance ca.gov slash library, you would get the home page here. From the online resources, just click to historic newspapers and directories, and it will get you to our portal, which looks like so. And as you can see, I did here, just type in the information 1313 CODA. Also, there are two clicks here. You may notice right highlighted is the his, historic city and phone directories. That's also important. Back in the day, they had rev what we call reversed directories. So instead of listing you by your name, they also listed you by your address. So you can go down all of CODA and see who lived where. We digitized a lot of the older ones, so you could see who lived where. And it's not just Torrance. We also digitized a lot of the older Pac Bell books that included the Palos Verdes Peninsula, and San Pedro, Redondo Beach, Lomita, and other uh, local areas. And here's what it's going to look like. You could see another helpful hint here is you can see your search terms are highlighted or in bold. So that's called word in context, meaning you don't have to open the PDF, wait forever, grab a cup of coffee, wait for it to come up in your awfully slow computer before you understand what is exactly there. So you could take a look here and see if your address is there or if it's something completely different. It saves a lot of time. Uh, in this case, we have a lot of information about who lived on that particular street. And you can see uh, a lot of folks by the name of Fritz Newts, 1313 Coda, worked for Columbia Steel. Also great because it tells you how, uh, where they worked and what they did for a living. So when your father told you, yes, I was president of Grumman Northrop back in 1933, and you look up uh, the um, information here, and you found out, find his name under janitor, well, <laughs> it's also a great uh, area for old photographs of uh, houses. This is the Reeves house. Now, you only got a photograph in the city directory if you happen to be pretty up there. Uh, Reeves owned the local hardware store in Torrance. But you can see the beautiful prairie style home before any sort of additions, subtractions, or modifications of the home. Again, this is the same home. It's going to be in the upper left hand corner of this slide, shows you the original outline of that home on the corner of Arlington there. Now you're saying for, again, we discussed that a lot of our new homes here was built after the 60s. Uh, we have a little glitch, I'm sorry to say, with our uh, website. It doesn't do well on the portal I just showed you from information from, say, 1965 to 1970. Uh, they made a mistake and they didn't index that part. Thank goodness for Google. Google saves us. Google, however, went and crawled all that information. So if your house was built say after 1965, try this technique of getting information about your house. Go to Google Advanced Search, and to get to Google Advanced Search, simply write, you guessed it, Advanced Search in Google, and it should come up as your first hit. 
From here, you on the top with the big arrow that says Google, you just put in what you want to search for. The important part here is to look down to where it says site or domain. Basically, you put the site of our site. I, it's really long and complicated, but you could steal that directly from our website at torrentca.gov slash archive newspapers. What that's asking Google to do is just search our database, which Google, more than happy to do uh, with a few ads, will come up and you can see there's all your Torrance Heralds, Torrance Herald Press, and Peninsula Press from 65 on up to 1970. Hey, again, an example of what you could find in the old newspapers. Um, there's our crest, 10% down from $36,950. Uh, that's not what my parents paid for it. <laughs> that was double that when they paid for it in the 60s. I'm showing you this because <clears throat> I want to show you the properties. This is what the page actually looks like when it shows up on your browser. Again, this is what you can do, find in the newspapers. This particular uh, image is an advertisement from a developer, a new developer in Torrance. It was gold. It not only told you about the house, how much it cost, what it was made of, how many rooms it had, what the landscaping was like, the name of the architect, the name of the developer, um, how much they were expected to get for it, et cetera. It's just what we call a spec house nowadays. But it's a beautiful picture. You can see what it looked like in 1927, and you can also see what it looks like today. Not quite the same. I am happy to report, however, that this particular house was recently purchased, and the new owner has put it almost to its original state. With both landscaping, interior details, she did a marvelous job. And you... <laughs> and she also used the information she found in the old newspaper clippings to help her in the renovation of her house. Don't forget your local historical society. Torrance, Palos Verdes, Palos Verdes Estates, particularly the estates, the local history room in the Palos Verdes Library, all will have information on your homes. They'll have either the older newspaper in microfilm that has not been as yet uh, digitized. Uh, they might have other old advertisements, old maps, old realtor maps that will help you in your house hunting. Here's another example. I used 1521 Elm Avenue someone asked me about at work. So I went looking through the assessors. I find, found out the year it was built, 19. 48 slash 1952, so it was majorly remodeled in 52. And in our newspaper, again, I hit pay dirt, just typing in the address, showed me that it was the first raffle house in the South Bay. Yes, PV uh, likes to think that it invented the house raffle, but in 1948, the uh, students at Torrance High uh, and the band boosters built their own house and they raffled it off to the best bidder. Bad news is I couldn't figure out how much they raffled it off for. I would love to have known how much uh, the winner paid for the particular house. These are some other articles about the house telling me who's lived in the house, what they did for a living, uh, miscellaneous uh, about the people, who they visited. If you have a really old house, say in the Estates or Redondo Beach, you're gonna have tons of stuff of, Yes, Mrs. Smith visited Mrs. Jones. Mrs. Jones played cards with Mrs. Smith. Mrs. Smith and Mrs. Jones went for a, a run, wonderful romp to San Pedro. <laughs> Get all types. Again, an idea of what the house looked like in 1948 and what it looks like currently. Notice that they redid it quite a bit. Added a porch, added a room, uh, got rid of the nice uh, burl walnut in the den, no doubt. Again, remember your library. Your library is the depository of a lot of local history knowledge. Hit up your local history librarian. Ask her if they have any information about uh, the area. If you're a Palos Verdes Estates folks, you want to make sure you ask your city about what your art jury may have said about your house. Chances are that art jury not only has a photograph of your original house, uh, may even have your plans. 
Again, these are things to ask about. And one other thing. The 1940 census has just come out. Both Palos Verdes and Torrance has Ancestry.com available to you through their libraries. You have to actually go into the library to access this, but this is great information. Again, all you have to do is know something, uh, hopefully from the phone directories or a building title or a deed, you will have come up with a name of someone who may have lived in your house. Plug that into Ancestry and make sure that you have it listed as Los Angeles County. And I feel sorry for you if the person who originally built your house was a Mr. Smith. <laughs> this is an example of what you're going to find. You're going to find how much your house was worth in 1930, 1920, or 1940. You're going to uh, be able to see what your person did for a living. In 1940 census, you're going to find out who lived in the house, what they did, how much they were paid, uh, etc. Almost a full dossier on the first person or the person who lived in your house in 1940, 1930, or 1920. Uh, again, Sanborn map of the actual house here, uh, 1341. This is one of the mansions on Post Avenue in Torrance. This is not one of the mansions in Post Avenue in Torrance. This is a little house in Lamita. The neat thing about this particular house was I happen to know uh, that it was here in 1940. Uh, and I was able to find the name of the person who was living there in 19, um, 1940. So I found out that from the 1940 census, this house was worth 2,800 whole dollars. This is, by the way, on a quarter acre in uh, Lamita. Yes, still a quarter acre, by the way. It's really nice. Uh, he earned $22,000 a year, worked 36 hours a week, was from Austria, had an eighth grade education, and was a longshoreman. Isn't that scary? All that you can get from the, both the newspapers, the census, and the, um, I'm missing one, census, newspaper, and directories. Think creatively. There's a lot of resources that are continuously coming up online. This is, again, a 1940 topographical map of the peninsula. It shows the roads. In the upper right hand is Rolling Hills Estates. Uh, the streets aren't where they're supposed to be currently. And one of the fun things about these maps is trying to figure out where the heck the streets are and if they correspond at all with the streets as they are now. Uh, this goes up. Crenshaw is coming down diagonally, again, from the upper right hand, up the canyon way. Uh, if I went a little to the right, you would see Chadwick School uh, in 1940 up on the hill there. The neat thing is that this road didn't, didn't exist, and Crenshaw is not in the same position as shown in this map. The little black dots that's very hard to see that you might think are floaters in your eyes, they're actually, uh, the little black dots signify buildings. So if you're looking at an older topographical map, in this case Malaga Cove, you can see by the little dots where your house might be or where a major landmark such as the neighborhood church um, or PV Drive, in that case, uh, west. west, would be. Fun with EIRs, okay. Whenever something needs to be done nowadays, they need to make money. EIR cores are one of the best things you use to make money because whenever you want to do something building-wise, someone's going to object. And this is how you keep ob objections down and make money for EIR firms. Yes, I'm sorry, I'm a little cynical. But for our, it's great, it's gold for house history buffs. Because what an EIR does is go back into the history of a plot of land. So, so suppose they want to build huge condos, oh, on, say, Deep Valley Drive, um, and avoid a slide going down into Deep Valley Drive. Well, um, they'll probably have to do an EIR. What they do is they go back to the history of the um, area. They'll see if there's any sandborn maps. They'll see if there's topographical maps. They'll see if there's any other it's toxic spills. They'll look into all, a lot of the information we have discussed now in a convenient form. Better yet, the EARs are public information. 
Generally, for a major project, they'll be at your public library. They might even be, in this case, this is an E-I-E-I-O, E-I-E-I-O, of a project going on at the uh, Palos Verde City Hall, the, the ex-Nike site. It was available freely online. So in this case, it tells me that there are no Sanborn maps for that area, which I already knew be, because it was built in the 50s. But it gives you retrospective maps of the peninsula going back to 1901 that will show how your area has evolved in 1901, 1963, and in this case, notice all those little black dots around the roads are developments springing up. Might even be one of yours. 1996, and how the developments have. And notice that there's no longer a marine land. <laughs> and there's a Terranea that springs up. Again, this is a good way of judging what has happened in the long run in your neighborhood. Troubles, there's always going to be a trouble. Uh, and again, you have to think creatively, think outside the box. This particular house is the oldest house in Torrance. It's a beautiful uh, Victorian. Uh, this is the house where they found uh, the weapons inside the walls. Another thing, when you're tearing up your house, when you're doing that remodel, take a look at your walls. What newspaper did they use for insulation? That's going to tell you a lot about when your house was last remodeled. Uh, they even may have writings and scribblings on the very plaster of your walls. Again, note that sort of stuff. This particular house was moved from someplace in Los Angeles to its lot in Torrance. In that case, it's, we still don't know exactly where this house came from, and the search continues. Much like your genealogical studies, your house genealogy may, be in, may take years to finally figure out if you figure it out completely at all. But I warn you, it's addicting. Now, you, while you're reading about this house, you're also reading on the newspapers what happened in your community during those time periods. I thank you, and I'll take any questions about house history, where to go, and how to, how to find. <laughs> Sir. When digitizing all this information, do you digitize the entire newspaper? Of the, I'm happy to say that Torrance Public Library with the gracious help of the Friends of the Torrance Library, and particularly the Torrance Historical Society, I'm a board member, um, digitized the entire run we had of the Torrance Press, going from 1914 to 1970. It's the only local newspaper that has so done. However, I'm happy to report that this is an ongoing trend. Um, Redondo Beach has a similar project on, under development. El Camino College has recently digitized its uh, student newspaper as well as its yearbooks. As digitization costs go down, look to see more and more local newspapers. I'd love to see the Daily Breeze uh, digitized, but then you get into copyright issues and what Copley might think of that, I don't know. Any other questions? Ma'am. Oh. Well, uh, what is the oldest development in, on the peninsula? Well, the oldest area on the peninsula, I, I'm guessing here, um, it depends who you talk to. It, it could be the Vandalup estate. Uh, it, could be one, it could be the Sepulveda adobe when it was here. Uh, it could be developments on White Point. Uh, where they had the um, resorts. Uh, it could be uh, m the Malaga Cove area in the late 20s. Uh, it depends what you mean by development. Well, I mean well, I would definitely say it's either Walturia, believe it or not, was around since 18, it has been around since 1880 at least, or Redondo Beach, of course, has been around much, uh, much longer than that, you know, well into the uh, late 1800s, because it was a fun place to be back in the 1800s. Any other questions? Oh, sir. We, what interesting things have we found while researching folks' houses? 
a lot, actually. Um, the, the gun, we don't know a thing about it, why it was there, when it was put in the wall, even. So that, that's a complete mystery. Um, yet, we're combing the newspapers for that one. Uh, I, had, I gave this talk to a group in Lamita not too long ago, and to show you how you can use these techniques to research most anything, someone came up oh, about a year afterwards and told me that they used these techniques to look up her property in Nova Scotia and used the information there to have it declared uh, the Canadian equivalent of a historic landmark site. So you could use this not only in Torrance or Palos Verdes, but also anywhere that there's, there's a home. The funny things uh, are, there's a number of them, um, found a house that's about six to 700 square foot, had seven people living in it, <laughs> seven. And as we were going down the block, uh, we found that that was not uncommon in the 1930s, uh, to have so many people in so small a house. Um, so that's the... Costs of housing always amazes me, except when you took a look and that guy paid $2,500 for his house. Remember, he was making $2,200 a year. So you always have to remember the relative costs. What's fun is looking at the old advertisements next to your houses. So when you're looking at your Palos Verdes Bay Club advertising, that you can get one of those um, end units for $36,000. That was $36,000 in 1962. What, you guys could tell me what you could have done with $36,000 in 1962. Bought a heck of a car. <laughs> we bought our house on Catalina Drive, and my children were among the first to go to school at Maricap. Uh-huh. Yeah. And they used to hike around San Ramon Canyon and find seashells yep. there. So I fascinated by what's happened to our sea coast. The sea came yep. yeah. Well, blame the people who tried to extend Crenshaw and when right. um, Similarly, I went to La Cresta Elementary School back when there was a little uh, La Cresta Elementary School. I had two options. I could go all the way around by road, two miles, or I went outside crossed the street, went through my neighbor's backyard, opened his gate, make sure I didn't let his dog out, go down the ladder and back, and down the canyon to school. That was all of, what, maybe less than a quarter of a mile. But you can't do that nowadays, because you're going to get sued. I wouldn't let kids tromp through my backyard, even if I like kids, because who knows, if he tripped, dad, the attorney, is going to take the house. But it's, again, it's, there were actual newspaper accounts of uh, when La Cresta was first built, um, how many kids there were, and it helps with the memories. If you have kids, these sort of things are great to show them. Now, here's information on what it used to be like. Yes. How can a computer novice get access to a lot of the information I was mentioning here? Very simply. Ask your librarian. That's what we're here for, folks. Uh, the Palos Verdes librarian, the Torrance librarian, the San Pedro librarian, we're here to help the public. And we can help you with that. The very simple answer is get cards. Get a Torrance public library card. Get a Palos Verdes public library card. Get a Los Angeles public library card. With those, those gives you, give you the access to the databases I was discussing. If you ever have a problem with those databases, feel free to come in and talk to a librarian. We'll be more than happy to demonstrate them for you uh, and show you exactly what to click where. That's part of our job. Might even look at a book. Whoa! <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> what, what's a book? Oh. We live in the Palo Bay Club. Could you give me just a short story about when that was built and how much I'm afraid how isolated was it well, I'm afraid I don't have a lot of information about that I did a, a write up for my father back when he was living in the Palace for his Bay Club but I don't have that with me now the short the short of it is it was the primary it was a swingers pad guys 
uh, all your uh, young engineers. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, the gentleman was asking about the Palos Verdes Bay Club. Um, I believe it was built in the early 60s. It was just the start of the own your own condo. This is a new thing back in the early 60s, owning a condo. You went in an apartment. This was your own condo. And back then it was primarily marketed for young, hip executive types, airline pilots, um, uh, young engineers, those sort of folks that wanted the, the surfer, a gidget type of lifestyle. Um, it was the big drawback was it was way out in the heck of absolutely nowhere. It was, but that was part of the charm, and uh, indeed part of the charm. The Rolling Hills Estate ads really put it well, where that where else can you go within 45 minutes of Los Angeles and ride your horse? Um, they wanted this part of the selling point was how open it was. Well, about thirty-six thousand dollars back back in the time. Um, again, going to the library and typing in Palos Verdes Bay Club, you could come up with a lot of good information. Since it was one of the first developments there, they got a lot of information on it, uh, including how everybody, as usual, hated the place because they're building this big condominium on a bluff in Palos Verdes. Just think how much you would complain if someone was going to do that on Rock Point. Yeah. What about the Wayfarers Chapel? Information on that, even about um, Charles Lawton, who opened the place, evidently. Oh, what about Wayfarers Chapel? Again, it's something uh, I'd have to research, but it's a lot of good information in the newspapers about it. Great uh, photographs. This is something that they have a lot of in the Palos Verdes local history room. Uh, great photographs of the opening of Charles Lawton reading his speech, of how, when you look at it, when I showed you that picture of early Palos Verdes, what was the first thing you thought? No trees. Not a single tree on this entire peninsula. No trees. Uh, if you were in the estates, Olmstead planted a few for you. Uh, on the Palos Verde side, it was where you grazed your cattle. So there was no trees. So I thought if you wanted to get rid of all of these people fighting about sight lines, about tree heights and stuff, pass a law in Palos Verdes and Rancho Palos Verdes, no tree can be higher than it was in 1922. <laughs> Solved. Palos Verdes apparently means green sticks I can't answer that. Yeah, it was um, uh, coastal. Yeah. <laughs> See, well, the, it, I would go with that, except that it was known as uh, Rancho de los Palos Verdes even Sepulveda's time. So there was some coastal trees, some watersheds, some um, green sticks. Notice how they said it wasn't green trees, but green sticks. That name, by the way, is still under debate. Uh, exactly why it was called that. Sir. The Palos Verdes Bay Club was the development that started the uh, move to incorporate Rancho Palos Verdes. Ah. They were, there were plans to build uh, Santa Monica style 20 story condos. Uh, I want to thank you very much for putting up with me. Uh, this is an image of the George residence in Seattle in 1919. Thank you for watching Peninsula Senior Lecture Series. I'm Betty Wheaton. See you next time.